Good morning, everybody. We want to welcome you to our Dallas First Church Sunday morning service. We are so thankful for the technology we have to allow us to continue having services in times like this. So go ahead and gather your kids, wake up your spouse, even include your pets, and let's have some church. For the time being, you'll be able to continue to find our Sunday services right here online, as well as our midweek classes, which happen Wednesday at 7 on Facebook Live. But remember, online services are not the only way you can stay connected. We encourage you to reach out to someone, give them a call, send them a text, invite them over your house to watch the services, or even do a Bible study. I do want to encourage you today as we get into the service that you don't just sit back, but get engaged. During the worship, sing out loud, clap your hands, raise your hands. Whatever it is that you would normally do here at church, do it right there in your home. When pastor is preaching, get a notebook, your Bible, drop a comment down below so we know you're watching. Be engaged because we believe that God is going to move today in your homes just like he does here at the church. We believe that the Holy Ghost is going to be poured out. We believe there are going to be lives changed. We believe for signs, wonders, and miracles. So get ready and let's have church. Your love. No. no, I can't stop singing about your love. Jesus, forever you will be more than enough. 
so worthy. Hallelujah, Lord, we love you, Jesus. Hallelujah, love you, Jesus. How we worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah. There is no one like you, Jesus. Hallelujah. How we glorify you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord, we worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah, God, we praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah.
maker, a way maker, miracle worker, 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 you are a way maker, miracle worker, a way maker, miracle worker, a way maker, miracle worker. You see. Even when I don't now. see it, you're working. And even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. And even when I don't see it, you're working. And even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working.
Welcome, Dallas First Church. So good to see all of you here on this beautiful Sunday morning. Wow, what a week we have had. So much going on with this coronavirus, or as uh, one of our leaders says, China virus. Oh, my goodness, help us. The politics is up and down and all around. But we're not going to politicize this. We have made it a time of prayer. I personally have prayed for each one of you so many times this week. I have taken it to heart to spend more time this week in prayer than I have in many, many, many weeks. Because I realize the struggles that so many are going through mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually, and yes, even financially. People being laid off, people uh, just stressed and having much grievances. But I'm praying for you because you're special to me. You're close to my heart. I love you, and I'm glad today that I get to minister this good word of God into your spirit. Wasn't the singing so miraculous today, so beautiful, so anointed? I am so grateful for the Dallas First Church music team and how and what all they do to bring that about. So grateful, not only for their talent, but for their hunger for the anointing of God. And I'm grateful we feel that right now. But before I preach to you, I'm so glad you've gathered around and ready and you're here. But before we can do anything, we've got to assume the position. You know what I'm talking about. Get out on the edge of your seat. Stretch your hands out in front of you. Get your eyes wide with excitement. Your mouth opened up wide. Here we go. I can wait on you. Come on now. Everybody, come on you young men. Pull this thing together now. Help us out. Everybody, hands shaking, eyes wide, mouth wide. When I count to three, throw your hands high in the air. It'll pull you out of your seat and shout, yeah. You ready? Here we go. One, two, three. Yeah. Oh, wow. That was so good. I feel so young, and I know you do too. Let's do it one more time. What do you say? You ready? Here we go. Hands shaking, eyes wide, uh, mouth open. One, two, three. Oh, wow. Wasn't that good? All right. Now, I think we can preach. Let's assume the position. I want you to worship with me shout with me amen me as I preach to you we are going to continue what we started last Sunday it uh, is our Easter series and I'm preaching about uh, our answer to distressed people and grieved souls last Sunday I preached to you about uh, chickens and eagles Chickens and eagles. Today, I want to preach on the second uh, uh, Sunday of this series. I'm preaching make him pay. And by making him, I'm talking about make our enemy, the devil, pay. So I'm reading from 1 Samuel chapter 6 and verse 30. David was greatly distressed for the people spake of stoning him. Because the soul of all the people was grieved and every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. Wow, what a word from the Lord. Let's bow our heads. Thank you, Father. You're so good to us. Bless this preaching, anointed into the lives of all these hearers. We give you all the glory in Jesus' name. And somebody shout amen. All right. Uh, yes, sir. Here we are. David in trouble. David with a problem. David, here he is, been out chasing after the enemy. And he comes back to his camp. And lo and behold, he finds that the enemy has come in upon him and has stolen away all the families and all the wealth of him and his men. They're in trouble. They have problems. 
And so the people were upset. They were grieved. They were distressed. The Bible says greatly dis- distressed. The Bible also says that their souls were grieved. They were hurting. They were going through problems and they picked up stones. They forgot that David was the uh, giant killer. David was the bear and lion tamer. David was the anointed of God. They forgot about that. They just were grieved and distressed. And they said, we're going to stone David. And so now David is distressed. David is in trouble. David feels the hurt of his people and it's been inflicted upon him. But what did he do? He didn't run and hide. He didn't cover up and whimper like a baby. He didn't whine. I'll tell you what he did. He went to prayer. He went to seek his God. Friend, I'm telling you right now, in the midst of your struggle, in the midst of your distress, in the midst of your grieving, it's not time to hide. It's not time to cover up. It's not time just to lay down and quit. It's time to pray. When you pray, devils have to flee. When you pray, power comes upon the scene. When you pray, the supernatural anointing of the almighty God comes into your life. Uh, Friend, one prayer can move mountains. One prayer can bring that deliverance. One prayer can bring that healing. One prayer. I'm talking about the power of prayer. And David encouraged himself in the Lord. That was his prayer. He was encouraging himself. He was laying down the negative and picking up the positive. He was laying down his frustrations and picking up the certainty of the word of God. He was coming out of darkness into the light. I'm telling you I don't care what's come your way this week. It doesn't matter what has come against you what has raised its head against you. Go to God in prayer. Seek his face. Seek his word and watch God go to bat for you with victory. David encouraged himself in the Lord. Wow. Man, that just tells me there's so much victory. There's so much power. There's so much great things of God for you but you're saying my health you're saying my wealth you're saying this sickness you're saying all these things are against me my job our relationships this and that friend I'm telling you get to God go to God don't you dare quit don't you dare give up Don't you dare go and say, my God can't deliver. I'm here to tell you, you come too late to tell me that God cannot answer. You've come too late to tell me that my God, your God, Jesus Christ, cannot show up in our difficult times. Friend, here he is, the great God of glory. Oh, I'm preaching to somebody. Now's not the time to go down. It's time to go up. It's not time to go over or under. It's time to go over. It's not time to be out. It's time to step in. Come on, somebody. Why don't you raise up and say, I'm going to be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Oh, thank you, Jesus, for your victory. Wow. Somebody shout, yeah. Somebody move around there wherever you're watching this and shout about how good your God is. He is the great God of glory. Mm, Thank you, Jesus. Proverbs chapter 6 and verse 30 In verse 31, it says, Men do not despise a thief if he steal to satisfy his soul when he is hungry. But if he be found, he shall restore sevenfold. He shall give all his substance from his house. Wow. When the thief is found... And that word found there in the original means to find. It means to acquire. (coughs) It means to catch, to secure as in a capture. 
So when the enemy is found, when he is captured, when he is acquired, it says that he shall restore that he's got to return. He's got to make amends. He's got to make good. He's got to give recompense. He's got to make restitution. In the original language, what it really means, he must make peace. <coughs> he must complete or finish what he messed up. He must repay. Friend, I don't care what the enemy has come against you and your family and your finances in your health or attacking your wealth. I'm here to tell you we found him out. We're putting our hands on him. And we're bringing him under control. And he must repay. Pay. And the Bible says he's got to repay sevenfold, seven times over. He stole your job, you're going to get a seven times better job. He stole your health, there's going to be a seven times reward in your health. I'm talking about the good things of God. Come on, when the enemy's found, he's got to repay sevenfold. Fold. It says from his substance of his house. That's his wealth. That's all of the high value that he took from you. Seven times. Come on somebody. I'm preaching to you. I'm wanting to see the great things of God come to pass in your life. Oh, take time right now and rejoice in the Lord for what he has done for you. How he is restoring you. I told you at the first of this year that God had given me four promises. And one of them that there was going to be a shaking. And there was going to be something. But it wasn't coming from the enemy. It was coming from God. That God was allowing it to bring into our life so much victory and power. See, you go through the dark times to appreciate the good times. The light. You go through the suffering to know what it is to have your victory and your power and rejoice in it. <coughs> Pardon me. But you hear me now. God is telling us that through all of this that we're going through, there is the reward that's coming. And the devil has got to pay. Friend, for all of the hurt that America is going through and the church is going through and you as individuals and families and ministries are going through, you just hold on. It's going to work out for our good. There's going to be blessings that are coming. People are going to come to God. Your kids are coming back to Jesus. Uh, your Mama and daddy are coming to the truth. Uh, those that you are witnessing to and reaching for. God has given us a platform to testify of his goodness. Uh, friend, it's revival. Let's make the devil pay. 1 John 5, 18. Mm, this is a good one. We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not. But he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, and that wicked one toucheth him not. Oh, come on, somebody. Oh, when you're born of God, when you're born of the water and the spirit, you have the power in you to overcome sin, to overcome the devil, to overcome our enemy. And that's what we're looking for. It's the power of God to keep us. He is begotten of God, keepeth himself. What does that mean, keepeth himself? <laughs> It means to guard. It means a fortress. It's implying a fort around us to keep us, uh, it, to attend carefully, to observe. So in other words, when you're born of God, you're not looking to sin. You're not running after sin. You're not running to do the things of God. No, you hate those things that you did before. You hate those things that had come up against you. Friend, I'm telling you, drugs and alcohol and illicit sex are no match for the power of the Almighty 
God. When God saved you, when God reached down and picked you up and turned you around and put your feet on solid ground, he gave you the power to overcome sin, a fort to run into. The name of the Lord is a mighty tower, and the righteous run into it and are safe. So we keep ourselves. <clears throat> and the wicked one can't even touch him. I'm preaching to you. The devil can't touch you. When you keep running after God. When the enemy comes in with all his little temptations. And his big temptations. You run to Jesus Christ. You run and hide yourself in the word of God. You run and put on that whole armor of God. You get in that prayer closet. You get with mighty men and women. Of faith and valor. And of the word of God. And you. You watch how the enemy can't even lay a hand on you with victory and power. Somebody shout glory. Somebody wave with me right now and enjoy the blessings of God and what he's doing for you in your life. Mm, thank you, Jesus. My next scripture is Luke chapter 10 and verse 19. This is Jesus speaking. And he says, Behold, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Oh, you get this blessed Holy Ghost. You get this anointed power of the Word of God standing up inside of you. You're no weakling. You're no little pushover. You, you, are, you are no wallpaper flower. You're no effeminate little darling. You will be a mighty man or woman in the power of the Holy Ghost. And he says, I give you power. Power. That power is a choice. That power is to exercise control with authority and influence and privilege. Friend, you're not your own, but you are bought by the blood of Jesus Christ. And the word is standing up inside of you with great power. And that power comes from the almighty God. Come on now. You're not a weakling. You're a strong man in the Holy Ghost. Uh, in the presence of the almighty God. You, uh, you can tread on serpents and scorpions. That's the devil and all of his followers. You can walk on him. Where's the best place to put the devil that's under your feet? You're a child of God. You've got royal blood. You have the power to what? To walk on the devil. And when the devil wants to bring you down, you just get up on top of him and dance. The Bible tells the story about Moses and those children of Israel when they walked across on dry ground through the middle of the Red Sea. And when the Red Sea came crashing down together, in the midst of it was Pharaoh's army. And they were discomfited. And their wheels of their chariots broke off. The horses stumbled. The men drowned. And they were washed up on the seashore. And the Bible says that Miriam and those women of Israel came and danced and played their tambourines and sang unto God as they danced upon their dead Egyptians. That's what this is a beautiful picture of. That sin that you to hold you, that sin that would bind you, that sin that would come against you, now, oh, it's under your feet by the power of the Holy Ghost, the Word of God, the name of Jesus, and the blood of Jesus. You can walk on it. You can tread on it. You get up there and dance in the Holy Ghost ghost that he's under your feet come on somebody that's what I'm talking about the power of the Holy Ghost he's given you that 
power, that authority, that influence, that privilege to walk on the serpent and the scorpion. The serpent, that's the devil, that old snake. Uh, he grows into a dragon, but he, God has defanged him and took the fire out of him and put him under your feet. That old scorpion, that thing that wants to sting, that kind of tells me about the sting of death. But wait a minute, uh, where is that sting of death? Uh, after the resurrection power of Jesus Christ, uh, why? We're walking on it in faith. We're walking, we're treading, we're dancing, we're shouting upon the powers of the enemy. Wow, he is under our feet. It's not just the power to tread on serpents and scorpions, but it says over all the power of the enemy, all the strength. And the ability of the enemy of our soul. We have power over that. Uh, wow. Come on. That enemy is telling you. You're going back uh, like a pig to its mud. Uh, and its slop. Uh, you're going back like a dog to its vomit. You hear me now. You're a child of God. You've got the glory of the Almighty. As long as you're wrapping yourself in the power of the word. As long as you're seeking God first. And putting him first in your life. Uh, Hey, the devil can't lay a hand on you. The scripture goes on to say, And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nothing shall hurt you. No thing, uh, no one can hurt you by any means. I'm preaching to somebody right now. Oh, we need to shout nothing. Shout nothing right there. I didn't hear you. Shout it louder. There you go. Nothing. Nothing. Coronavirus. All of the downtrodden and the uh, frustrations in the economy positions uh, from what this national emergency and worldwide emergency is doing maybe to your finances. Make up in your mind, greater is he. My God's able to help me. My God is sending me strength. Uh, I'm putting my trust in him. Some may trust in horses and some in chariots. Psalm chapter 12. When he says, but I will remember the name of the Lord my God. He's able to bring you through. He's able to help you. Hey, there's victory for you. There's power for you. And that's what we're talking about. Wow. Somebody shout amen. Oh, this is good. The Bible says in Colossians chapter 2 and verse 15, it's talking about Jesus Christ. In verse 13 and 14, it's talking about how the cross of Jesus overcame the power of the enemy. And verse 15 says, And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it, uh, having spoiled, in other words, he conquered principalities and powers. And so now he's making an open show of them, showing his triumph uh, in or over them. Uh, and what this is showing is in the days of the Apostle Paul, who was writing this, when Rome had conquered nations... And the Caesar was returning back. The, that Roman general was coming back. Uh, he would bring behind him. Uh, that conquering hero would bring behind him. The kings that he had conquered. The mighty generals he had conquered. They would be chained. They would be handcuffed and tied to the very chariot that the general was riding in. That the conquering hero was riding 
coming in. And he would parade them through. He would have mighty men of those kings uh, chained and bound uh, behind them. Uh, and they would come and they would be marching. They were either to be executed or they were to be made slaves. Uh, or they would go to the arena as gladiators. Uh, but they were conquered. They were vassals. Uh, and he was showing and triumphing to all the people of Rome. This is who we've conquered. This is who we're bringing to you. And this is what Jesus Christ was saying at his cross. Uh, when he come out of that grave. He was bringing out all the enemies of our soul. All the enemies of our flesh. Uh, everything that was rising up against us. Uh, hey, chained they are to the chariot of Jesus Christ. Uh, there goes that general that he conquered called death uh, and the one called grave. Uh, <coughs> And that one that is triumphing over you, whether it's drugs or alcohol, a lion tongue, cheating, carousing, running, maybe it's alcohol, sex that's illicit, or whatever it is, I'm here to tell you they are chained, they are bound to the cross of Jesus Christ. And here he comes showing in an open forum how he has conquered them. I'm preaching to somebody right now. Hey, there's help. There's hope. There's joy for you. Homosexuality chained to that chariot of Jesus Christ. All of that lying and cheating in business and in relationships. All the dirty side of life. I'm here to tell you in an open triumph. Jesus is saying I've conquered them all. Come on let's make the devil pay. Let's make him pay. He's chained to Jesus. You and I are like the mob along the streets of Rome who were cheering on that great conquering hero and we're out here praising our God because we're, we are not succumbing to those conquered ones. We are victorious through the blood of Jesus Christ. Those satanic powers that try to pull us down and put us out by moving into our thoughts and our emotions uh, and they want to nail us to a cross but I'm here to tell you there's already been somebody nailed to a cross uh, and he come off of that cross uh, they put him in a grave but the grave couldn't hold him oh I'm getting ahead of myself I'm wanting to preach Easter right now I'm wanting to preach the resurrection but I'm here to tell you you are free from the sins of your past from the sins of your present and from the sins of your future. Oh, I'm preaching to you. The devil's upset. The devil can't handle it. The devil is going down. He's afraid of you. He's upset with you. So I want to tell you from Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the tricks of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in high places. Now I just told you from Colossians 2.15, he's already overcome that. And now they're under him. They are enslaved to him. He is their power one. He is their almighty one. I'm telling you right now, put on the whole armor of God that you can stand and stand there. We're having your loins girt about. Put on all that armor of God. And I'm telling you, you shall quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. I'm preaching to somebody, there's hope. There's victory. Let's forget the culture and the personality of our world. And let's find the culture and the personality of the church of Jesus Christ. I'm telling you, it's one of victory. It's one of praise. It's one of breakthrough. The Bible 
Bible says, Repent of your sins. Be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. There is power. There is victory. There is overcoming strength for you. You're not by yourself. You are not alone. You have a friend. His name is Jesus Christ. He has a church and it's reaching for you. That church is a family. That church is a place of peace. That church is a place of victory. That church is a place of healing. And it's for you right there where you're watching me right now. Why don't you make up in your mind? I've got to turn to this Savior. I've got to turn to this one who is triumphed. I've got to turn to this one that has the power. His name is Jesus. Why don't you kneel right there where you're at? Why don't you just kneel right there now and just raise your hands and talk to him. Repent of your sins. And the Bible says you shall receive and arise and be baptized in in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. There is power right now. There is victory right now. Make the devil pay. You don't have to go to sleep tonight in your sin. You don't have to lay down in darkness tonight. There is victory. There is joy. There is power. There is passion in Jesus Christ for you now. Come to this altar. Watch what God will do in your life now. Let's pray. Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, as many are gathering there in their homes, gathering there in those places, seeking your face right now, touch them, save them. In Jesus' name, we give you the glory and the praise. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us. We trust that the worship and the message have been a blessing to your family. If you want to take that next step, whether it's a Bible study because you want to know more, you are filled with the Holy Ghost, or you want to receive the Spirit of God, you want to be baptized in Jesus' name, or you just need somebody to pray with you, we want to take that next step with you. So click the link below, fill out the form, and we will be in touch with you. Also, we appreciate your continued financial support of Dallas First Church. Because of your giving, we're able to minister globally and locally, especially during times like these where we are trying to help and support those in our community who have been affected. Again, let's stay connected to the church family. And don't forget, this Wednesday at 7 o'clock, we will continue our midweek classes on Facebook Live. God bless and hope you have a great day.